Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of KJV BibleBelievers.com. On this program, we conclude our two part study titled The Cost of Reward. And our text is Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 40. Philippians 2, beginning verse 6 and 7, read that with me. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Now, if you have a new version, you'll see how they totally butcher that. And if you don't have a new version, then just trust me, they butcher that. But Jesus, being in the form of God, he was God manifest in the flesh, and yet he thought it not robbery to be equal with God being a man. But, but, see that word, but, made himself of no reputation. What? He came born of a virgin that no one knew. His daddy was just a carpenter. He grew up in Nazareth. Made himself of no reputation. A man of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. Servant. And was made in the likeness of men. God manifest in the flesh. Verse 8, read that. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See? He came serving and willingly died. You have this big debate. Who killed Jesus? The Jews? Yeah. What? Yeah, he did. And so did the Romans. And then go look in the mirror because you did too. Jesus went to the cross for every human being who ever existed. If you're human, you killed Jesus. He went to the cross to pay for your sin. Amen. And He did that in submission to the will of God. So the mark of a true believer ought to be our willingness to obey the Father no matter the cost. No matter the cost. Now, I don't want to boast or anything, but I just want you to know that if it wasn't for the Lord calling me to do what I'm doing, I'm living somewhere on a beach right now. Can't you tell? <laughs> I mean, if you can't tell where my heart is by my wardrobe, amen. God has called me to be where I'm at, and that's why I'm here. The day he says, all right, Greg, it's all done. You can do whatever you want now. I say, honey, pack your bag for moving. <laughs> but that's the way it ought to be. No matter where it is, what the cost. Verse 40, read that. Oh, wait a minute. Go back to Mark 10. You're in Philippians. Flip, flip from Philippians back over to Mark chapter 10. <laughs> and in verse 40, Mark 10, 40, read that with me. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. So he says he's submitting to the will of the Father. The Father's calling the shots. <laughs> and it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. There is reward. reward easy for me to say. There is reward. And it is not wrong to work for reward. Let me tell you something. That is a blessing on some days. And that includes just things like going to church. That includes things like handing out gospel tracts. That includes things like giving an offering into the offering box, we call it. That includes things that a lot of times you are not going to feel like doing. You're not going to be motivated. You're going to be tired. You not, may not feel like, you know, feel right, feel good. It's a bad day. And yet, if you then, in your mind and heart, you see, when you're judged for your works, it'll be your motive. Now, if you're doing it to be seen of men and glorified on this earth by men, you lose. You, I don't care if it's, you know, we talk, said giving money. There's people who give money and make sure everybody sees it. And there's people who go to church and they're sick and they're not feeling good, so they announce it. Hear ye, hear ye. 
I'm suffering for Jesus today. I should probably be in the emergency room. Now, James, he should have been Wednesday. But most of the time, that's not really legit. <laughs> that's one of the few times I've seen that really be the reality, that somebody ought to be in an emergency room and they're here. But, but you know what? James wasn't doing that to put on a show. He'll be rewarded. No matter what it is you're doing, if you're doing it to glorify the Lord and be rewarded by Him in the next life, then you will be rewarded for that as long as it's the right thing to do. I say that because I have a couple of friends who play the lottery in Jesus' name. And uh, I don't really think that really is... Yeah. Yeah. you got to do things biblically... But if the thing you're doing, you know, people who mean well and they go downtown and they, they spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> Graffiti is sinful, okay? It's, it's, it's destruction. It's, it, you, don't, you shouldn't. But there are people who really are so messed up, they think that they're, doing, they're glorifying the Lord by spray painting graffiti. You'll see it. Jesus saves on the side of a porn shop or something like that. And they, they think they're. You know, so we do things in ignorance. I think God, God forgives that, but they're not going to be rewarded for that. One time. <laughs> yeah, go down to Bexley. Go down to Bexley, you see some of Mike's artwork. Listen, the bottom line is, I want you to get out of this from Jesus and His conversation with the apostles is, you can, you can bank on two things. Heaven is free to you. Now, heaven wasn't free, but it's free to you. Heaven cost... God, His only begotten Son, for you. So heaven is free to you. All you have to do is turn to God in faith, trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and your sins are forgiven. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. You now have eternal life. You're not earning anything. You're not on probation. You have eternal life. The wrath of God no longer abides on you. You have come into life. He that hath the Son hath life. You've got it. It's yours. Heaven. But reward is earned. Reward is earned. What you receive in reward in heaven will be based on what you've done here on earth. It will be commensurate with your performance. Amen. Some of these Christians, you know, I'm saved. I'm just glad I'm going to heaven. And then they spend their life just kind of floating. I, I make fun of, we used to sing a song in the Baptist choir I was in years ago. And it was singing, well, I'm winging my way back home. You ever heard of that? Show of hands. <laughs> None of you? You ain't Baptist. What's wrong? A bunch of liars. Free will, that's what the problem was. Yeah. I used to hate that song because it sounded like, you know, I'm saved and now I'm just kind of like, mm. one of these days I'm going to come down and land. You know. That's what the song sounds. But then I thought, well, pff, that's the way most people are living. I'm saved. That's what they expect. That isn't the way to live the Christian life. Mark is just mean. <laughs> Salvation, Jesus paid it all. Amen? Amen. Amen? Say it again. Salvation, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Amen. Reward, Jesus rewards our service. The, the, that may sound oversimplified, but you, you get that and you'll be beyond your under, the understanding of the average Joe Christian. They don't take this thing of reward seriously. And I don't want anybody in here to not take that seriously. Because the Word of God takes it seriously. Now, let me, let me, uh, you, that doesn't mean you come to me and say, what should I do? 
My name is not Greg Holy Spirit Miller. <laughs> a lot of preachers do have that middle name, or so they think. You need to get on your knees with God and say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? Now, don't ask that if you don't mean it. You know, get on your knees and what do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to be a missionary to Michigan. No! No! Anything but that. But you better make sure you got the right heart and attitude and then you say, Lord, what do you want me to do? With the reality that... Now, he... And there's times where, you know, you think he's leading you one direction and the door slams. But it's kind of like Abraham, you know. He wanted to know if Abraham was willing. Not always that you're going to do the deed. And <laughs> not actually go to Michigan. You just have to be willing to go to Michigan. So is everything tried by fire? Everything tried by fire? Everything, your works. Once you're saved, your works are tried and it says, so as by fire. We're talking a spiritual dimension that we don't even understand. But for our understanding, he says, picture everything you're doing kind of being stacked up and then it, it, there's a lighter to it. And if you've done it the right way for the right reason, it's like it's scotch guarded or something. What is the, the fire retardant has been sprayed on it. It's not going to burn. But if you didn't do it for the right reason with the right motivation, it'll go... Well, it's, yeah, everything you do. But it's all judged separately. You know, so some things we've done will go up in flames and other things won't. But Paul said there'll be some people saved so as by fire, meaning they're not going to have any work standing. But they're saved because salvation isn't based on that. Salvation is based on what Jesus did. And you need to understand that. It's a very basic thing. When you were born, you were born. You could go back and try to sue the doctor, but you lose. You were born, you're here. You didn't have anything to do with it, did you? And in the same way, being born again is not by your works. The only thing you have to do with it is believing. And even that, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you can't even take credit for that. But then your works... That's what adults do. In the, hu in the human life, the adult works and gets paid. Is able to eat, able to have a shelter, able to have a transportation or whatever. In the same way as an adult Christian, you work and you'll be rewarded, but that doesn't have anything to do with being born again or saved. And the bottom line to all this is that Jesus will be the only one to be glorified. Amen. Jesus will be glorified. Even our rewards will be based on the fact that we were born again by faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. All of our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, which is for the church only, by the way, and when the church is there and we are judged according to our works for reward, everything we do will be done with the understanding that we only are there because of what Jesus has done. He died on that cross, shed His blood and paid the full price for your sin, was buried and rose again, and for eternity we will thank Him for that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this study. And we thank You for helping us to understand the difference between salvation and reward so that we can be mature Christians, that we can live for You with understanding and knowledge. And I pray that everyone here this morning would have that understanding, that we would go about your work for your glory and to be rewarded in the next life. And we thank you for that wonderful truth uh, that is given to us. Everything we learn from your book is something we would not know otherwise. And we do thank you for the Holy Spirit, the peace that we have, that he carries us through our day the wonderful relationship that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, so sweetly abide. Visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of mp3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.